I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hi, I'm Luke Ryan for JoeBlow.com and welcome to Movie Endings Explained, where we'll be taking a look at some of the more ambiguous and discussed movie endings that have left audiences debating their true meaning long after the credits have rolled. To kick things off here, I thought we'd tackle a less obvious choice, but nevertheless a film that had people talking about its conclusion for months following its release in 2012. The Dark Knight Rises, Christopher Nolan's epic conclusion to the Dark Knight trilogy, a film that will always be slightly overshadowed by the previous installment, but a great end to the series that seemed to tie everything up nicely at the end. To save Gotham City, Batman flies a nuclear bomb out to sea inside the Bat, which unfortunately is missing its autopilot function. So in a completely selfless act, Batman sacrifices himself to both save the day and the entire city. He dies in the blast, the people mourn his demise, Alfred cries, it's very sad. Throughout the movie, Bruce Wayne begins a relationship with a young cop named John Blake, who for some reason knows exactly who he is. Right when I saw you, I knew who you really were. Anyway, with his identity out in the open with Blake, Bruce decides to take him under his wing somewhat, and by the close of the movie following his death, Blake is left a package from Wayne. Following coordinates left for him by Bruce, Blake ends up inside the Batcave, and in a moment evoking a similar scene in Batman Begins, he's surrounded by bats. Meanwhile, Alfred is having a quick drink at a cafe in Italy when he looks over and sees none other than Bruce Wayne. It's a deep callback to a scene earlier in the film when Alfred said this to Bruce. I had this fantasy that I would look across the tables and I'd see you there with a wife, maybe a, a couple of kids. You wouldn't say anything to me, nor me to you. But we both know that you'd made it, that you were happy. So in a very fitting end, almost too fitting, we see Bruce alive and kicking, chilling out at the other end of the cafe, letting the most important man in his life, who was crippled with grief earlier, that he is in fact alive with a knowing nod. Alfred returns the nod and leaves. It's all very cinematic, but in a trilogy of films that took the very outlandish idea of Batman and put it into an ultra-realistic setting, a lot of people didn't buy this ending. It was too neat, too perfect. Why wouldn't Alfred rush over? Some have suggested that it's Alfred's dream, an idealized vision of his earlier wish to see Bruce alive, out of the game, and happy and that nothing more needed to be said, they just know. I can understand why people didn't buy the ending, especially coming off of Nolan's previous film, which had an incredibly ambiguous finale, and trust me, we'll get to that one eventually. It's almost ingrained in us at this point that a Nolan film should end with some level of questioning what we're being shown. So was the ending of The Dark Knight Rises really a dream? For one thing, Selina Kyle is sat right next to Bruce. Alfred had no knowledge of the relationship that had developed between Bruce and Selina, so why would he imagine it, or even dream of it? Now, I will concede that the moment is very unlikely. After all, could the publicly dead Bruce Wayne really just walk into a cafe unrecognized? Maybe he can. In the world of Batman, Bruce Wayne is a billionaire and well known in Gotham City, but is he that well recognized worldwide? Take a look at this list of the richest billionaires in the US from this year. Besides Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg, would you really be able to put a face to any of the other names? Perhaps in Italy, Bruce Wayne could blend in perfectly. But then again, he'd have to go to a lot of cafes on that one river to be there at that exact moment that Alfred was around. But he is Bruce Wayne, and could have probably very easily tracked Alfred's whereabouts. The final shot of the film sees Blake discovering the inner mechanics of the Batcave itself, presumably about to discover all the gadgets and tools that Bruce utilized in his time as the Caped Crusader. This is another talking point, what happens to Blake? I think the answer is pretty clear cut. Blake would go on to become Batman. Why? Well, Bruce talks to Blake earlier in the film about how Batman is a symbol, and the message of that symbol is far greater than one man. It's a completely selfless life to live. Now, what really throws a wrench into the works is this moment when Blake receives the package left for him by Bruce after he supposedly died. You should use your full name. I like that name. Robin. Thanks. So, his real name is Robin. Yeah, Robin. 
This has led people to theorize that Blake would in fact become Robin or Nightwing, perhaps with Bruce returning to the cowl down the line. As we know, Nolan has no plans to ever make another installment in his Batman series, and with the new Batman movies now rolling out, I think we can safely rule that option out completely. The intention was never to make a follow-up movie with Joseph Gordon-Levitt actually playing Batman in a movie, and I think the idea of it is a little bit better than actually seeing it play out on the screen too. And it's not like Batman has always been Bruce Wayne. There have been numerous characters in the comic book's history who have donned the cowl, such as Jean-Paul Valley, Dick Grayson, Tim Drake, Jason Todd, Damian Wayne, Terry McGuinness, even James Gordon. My theory is that Nolan put that cute little line in there as a nod to all of the fans of the character of Robin and a reference to the biggest Batman character that he didn't include in his trilogy. If you need any more convincing, I think there's a reason we see James Gordon marveling at the newly reconstructed Bat symbol at the end of the film. It's a signal of the return of Batman, and Bruce certainly looks like he's moved on from that life, which is the whole idea of Alfred's wish. Another tricky spot in this whole ending though is the autopilot of the bat. It was noted that it wasn't figured out yet and during the ending sequence Lucius Fox is told that the autopilot was actually fixed and programmed by Bruce six months earlier. Obviously that points to Bruce escaping the bat before the explosion but the way this scene is edited makes you think otherwise. He's literally pictured inside the bat seconds before it blows up. And even if he did eject out of the bat, how did he get far enough away from the blast and swim all the way back to the shore in a Batman suit without being noticed? The only answer I have for this is a simple one. Because he's Batman. Now I'm very much of the opinion that the audience can take away whatever they like from a film. So when it comes to endings like this, really, it's up to you. There's no real right or wrong answer. So feel free to chime in on your thoughts of this ending down below. I'd love to hear them. Before we close this thing out though, here are a few opinions from two key players in this film. First of all, Batman himself, Christian Bale. He says, I find it very interesting and with most films I tend to say it's what the audience thinks it is. My personal opinion, no, it was not a dream. That was for real and he was just delighted that finally he had freed himself from the privilege, but ultimately the burden of being Bruce Wayne. So Christian Bale isn't necessarily ruling out that it was a dream, but he has a very strong opinion on it himself. Then there's the director Christopher Nolan. He reasons this. For me, The Dark Knight Rises is specifically and definitely the end of the Batman story as I wanted to tell it, and the open-ended nature of the film is simply a very important thematic idea that we wanted to get into the movie, which is that Batman is a symbol. He can be anybody, and that was very important to us. Not every Batman fan will necessarily agree with that interpretation of the philosophy of the character. The only way that I could find to make a credible characterization of a guy transforming himself into Batman is if it was as a necessary symbol, and he saw himself as a catalyst for change and therefore it was a temporary process, maybe a five year plan that would be enforced for symbolically encouraging the good of Gotham to take back their city. To me, for that mission to succeed it has to end, so this is the ending for me and as I say the open ended elements are all to do with the thematic idea that Batman was not important as a man, he's more than that, he's a symbol and the symbol lives on. So there you have it, the ending of The Dark Knight Rises. Was it real? Was it a dream? Or was Inception just still too fresh on everyone's mind to accept this very coincidental and far-fetched scenario as the real ending? And what happened to John Blake? Did he become the new Batman? Did he become the new Robin? Or did he just become the new caretaker of the Batcave before the real Batman returned? As always, leave your thoughts down below. Once again, I've been Luke Ryan for JoeBlow.com and thanks for watching.